Nice. You're the talisman? Yeah, you, yeah, yeah, you, you, talisman yeah, you introduced. You're like oh. the official podcast guy. This is Miles Anderson. I'm the video editor for the Ballard Talisman. And I'm here with some of the Ballard High School crew of Beach Club. Katie Baker. Hi. Emma Obreton. Hello. And Leo Rau. Hi. So all four of us worked on Beach Club in some way. This is basically just going to be us talking about our experiences on the set of Beach Club and what exactly Beach Club is. It's a movie about acid and and exploration and um, expectations and, and expectations and self exploration. It's a it's about a lot of things. Yeah, it's about introspection and and friendship. And, um, Trust. Time. Yeah. It's time. a lot of different things. I think, yeah, I think expectations is like a good... A good summary. Yeah. So, again, just getting the basics out of the way. Us four, we are all involved. Who other than us were involved? Sebastian Messler was the director of photography. And he's a senior at the center school. Uh, and we had Jesse Romero. Senior at Ballard. Senior at Ballard, who w was our best boy. And um, we had Jack Kingsley, lead friend who uh, lives in Port Townsend, so he was there on the shoot. Um, we also had uh, our actors. Is that all the cast? Did I, think, I think so. Okay. Other than us four. Yeah. Okay. Should we say like our I feel, roles? I feel like there was more, yeah, but well, there weren't. What exact, let's go through the line here and just say what exactly we did on Beach Club. Okay, I wrote it and then directed it, and I did the storyboard and financed it while we waited for our Indiegogo money to come back. And you're kind of like the main editor. Yeah. You and Sebastian edit. I do a lot of the editing. Yeah. Emma? Um, so I was the art director. That was like my official title. Um, and I kind of helped with like set design a little bit and the costume design. Um, and then I also was the, what do you call that? The microphone holder? Oh, yeah. The boom, the boom, boom mic operator. operator. Boom mic yeah. operator. Yeah. The boom well, mic operator. That's something I found really <laughs> interesting about Beach Club is that like, I mean, some some of us had a lot of experience in film. Um, like Leo, you were in the film program for three years at Ballard. I've this is my fourth year in the film program. Sebastian, uh, Sebastian's Jesse. been in film. Jesse's been in film. But like you, I, Emma yeah, and Katie, in film. you guys haven't really done that before. Yeah. But I mean, I don't think it really mattered too much. I think you guys learned a lot, and it yeah. was it was really f yeah, it was really you know? fun. And it's like. It's like a bug almost, because now I want to make something. Yeah. Yeah. Like me and Katie want to do something. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And we actually. Yeah, something really small. Yeah, something in the work. We do, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Yeah. But um, nothing like big or anything. But mm. it definitely is like once you start from something like such a big production, it's like. Where do you go from there? Inspiring almost. Yeah. yeah, for sure. It's just like not a hard thing to learn though. I mean, it's operating yeah. a piece of equipment, and then beyond that, as long as you have like aesthetic sensibility. Can yeah. do it. You're good. You're good. So, Katie, what did you do? Um, my official title was I was the producer, but um, basically what that entails is I was like the almost like main assistant for anything they needed. I like drove them everywhere. I did various jobs when we were filming. Oftentimes, I would stay at the camp and like just organize our things and make sure we you were talk to people. You were, yeah, you were to people. I communicated. A lot. I held the boom mic sometimes. I was a substitute. I was a fill-in mm -hmm. for the main. Oh, you did the, um, the Oh, I did slate oh, a yeah, lot. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was like the slate, main slate person. Oh, so did you make definitely. an appearance? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You have a brief, like, one shot. <laughs> What's that called? Called? Leo. Leo has, extra. A, Leo I was has extra. a big part, too. Leo has a whole part. What's your name? Do you have a name? Oh, yeah. It's, or wait, it's should that not never, be disclosed? It's never said in the movie. Yeah, so I don't know if we should even talk about it. I was, officially, I was the first AC, which is the first assistant camera. I worked primarily in that, in the camera department, in the lighting department, which is where my interests lie. Um, and, you know, helped out here and there in different departments and pre-production, um, planning, that kind of thing. The point of this, as I said, just kind of trade stories, favorite parts of the shoot, least favorite parts of the shoot. Um, we shot in Fort Townsend, Washington, which is a good two and a half, three hour drive from Seattle. What, okay. what was your favorite part of shooting in Port Townsend? Definitely the environment we were in. Like I loved where we stayed where we camped and the beach was like, it was beautiful. Um, it definitely was very interesting filming in such a public area, especially when there were elderly walking around who get offended easily. <laughs> I loved like camping. I loved being on the road kind of and like 
I don't know. It felt living very, out like, of a car and kind budget. of yeah, it's living out of a tent budget. was awesome. Overall, I thought it was like a really fun experience that I would absolutely do again. Mm-hmm. Katie, what was your least favorite part about shooting in Port Townsend? It's hard because I feel like one of my least favorite parts is also one of my favorite parts, but the just the camping was really hard because I, as the producer, I was kind of like the mom of everyone, and I had to make sure that. Like, I don't know. I just, I felt like I was one of the more responsible people. And so I like had to make sure that even though there were things that we didn't want to do, like dishes or like cleaning. Oh or, yeah, for sure. Because our, our campsite was a, just basically a total pit the entire time. And it's really hard to shoot when everything else is disorganized because like constantly we were forgetting things. We couldn't find things. We would like, we would because our campsite wasn't like continuity. right next to it. Yeah, yeah continuity. continuity was such an issue. Just being and, able to like keep yeah. track of every all these crazy props and, and like little our things. tent kept breaking. Our tent was like oh always yeah, breaking. yeah. Oh. We had to like duct tape it and like yeah. put a bag to like uh, to like yeah, so, like, even out the, the weight. It was and the refrigerator was the trunk of your car. Yeah. Oh, oh, and the oh ice. no, that's officially my least favorite part. <laughs> yeah, that was that was my least favorite part. Was my <laughs> destroying my car probably. <laughs> And having a permanent smell there, that's my least favorite. Does it still smell like Spam? Or it was just like it's a log of meat? Taint. No, it, it was, was like the mixture of, of like the pickle sil- and milk <laughs> cooler <laughs> water. <laughs> It was like right from when we when we got that when we got that cooler and it was every day we'd open it and there'd be like a new it'd be like it'd okay, be like yellow water. day one ice normal ice right and here's our food in the ice day two it's green water day three there's no water safely people must have thought we were crazy like every yeah. night and like oh, and like our, that's and another thing in a really late would, night shopping we would go to right? Safeway every night and make so ten loops <laughs> because we didn't know what the hell we wanted we would just like. We would just go get crackers, go get meat, yeah. go get muffins, and then we'd be like, oh yeah, we also need biscuits. Go back to the. That's what was like random but it was stuff so I was saying. Then, well, it was so relieving. It, it was a great. Like but, the but then Katie's car got stuck there. Then there was a hitchhiking oh, incident. Oh yeah. yeah. Katie, can you tell that story? Actually? Yeah, okay. So um, one night, me, Justin, uh, me, Katie, Justin, Leo, Sebastian, we're going to Safeway. And one of our With actors, Max. Max, is a skater, and um, he's also <laughs> kind of like a little boy puppy yeah. who needs to get his wiggles out. So <laughs> they're on the way, there's a skate park, so we took him, That's we so dropped true. him off there so that he could skate while we out. go to Safeway. We went to Safeway, I and at this point, like my car is, is kind of like notorious for breaking down or not starting but it's not even like breaking down like the car will get to the place it's just, it just when you put your key in it will just stall yeah and it, it won't, won't start. start but then and it's not a battery thing and it's there's like no a... way of telling when it's going to happen yeah. and there's no way of telling like how long it's going to be yeah sometimes it can be like just wait 20 then, minutes then and Tacoma, it works then Tacoma. <laughs> but anyway so okay so we go to safeway i park my car we go in and then in the middle of it sebastian and leo are taking so long so me and justin decided to get gas picked up Leo and Sebastian and then we're going back to the campsite and I pull up and I don't want to stop pull up at the skate park and I don't want to stop my car because I know the risk of it not starting so I'm waiting for Max and he's taking so long even though we're telling Max to come in he like keeps forever. doing tricks he's like just another second or whatever and so finally I stop my car which was a big mistake and then when we get in to start it it doesn't start luckily it's like a parking area so I am not horrible like I'm not in the way of the street but I am just like kind of like loosely just like pulled over to the side Sebastian gets really mad because he hates my car and everyone's like okay let's just go walk around town for a little bit like Port Townsend's really nice and we're right next to town so what time around was that we, we walked around for we got back like an at hour 10:30. and then we checked it we walked around for another hour checked it anyways yeah. No, we, yeah. It Basically, it ended it up, it night. wasn't starting, we kept checking it, and me, and so finally, I went Leo, with Max and Justin, and we all 
we walked with For all like of the an ice. an hour, or like 45 minutes back yeah, to the we wa- But we never, we didn't make it because we all got lost in the night with all these cold in foods. Basically the worst. And we were like, ah. Uh, <laughs> and Max is so convinced he knew where we were going. He was kind of right in the end. But like, I was not going to fucking walk another mile and that. We were so far away when the guy, so anyways, I got out on the street and I was waving down every car and like so many assholes just drove right past us. So obnoxious. But anyways, I mean, you guys probably look crazy. Like, yeah. Ice mean, and yeah, like meats. And of course, Max is bringing <laughs> Giant, like meats. flappy army hat. Oh like, yeah, he's like <laughs> a twenty-seven-year-old yeah. man and a bunch of like TV yeah. shows. Well, but then um, yeah, me and who Sebastian. Was the guy who, who picked you up? Who Paul? His name was on his van. Mm. He really? Picked this up. It just yeah. said Paul. We got in, <laughs> and then uh, immediately all the ice melted on my lap into his seat. <laughs> did it look like he pissed yourself? It did. Exactly like that. You were just yeah. terrified. To waddle into the campsite with the wettest <laughs> lap I've ever had. Well, and then meanwhile, so Scotty, one of our actors, Emma, and yeah, myself I was in the back. are at the campsite. That was really fun. Just like sitting there. Yeah, and like our silence. phone, I feel like our phone like wasn't, like my phone didn't have service, mm-hmm. so like I wasn't able to see where anyone was, so I was just like, well, I'm going to go to bed. And then you guys got and home. <laughs> home. Well, no, we guys, didn't. Me well, and Sebastian. The you guys got hitchhikers home really got home at like... 11:30, I want to say. Yeah. And the, meanwhile, so my phone was having like the worst charging problem. So I'm oh, all the phones at, like, would never charge. Do you yeah. remember, like you would go oh, yeah, outside and the sucks. phones yeah. would not fucking charge. Mm-hmm. It'd be like on there'd 1% be like one for, like, charger that would hours. work, and we'd all have to <laughs> yeah. share the communal <laughs> charger. Like, oh. okay, can I unplug you? Oh, yeah. and that I was remember crazy. I, I didn't have my phone then because it was on top of Katie's. Ca- I left it on yeah. top of your yeah. car for like. Oh my god. Oh yeah, that was another thing that sucked. You guys always left things on top of my car. Like it was okay. I was just. But it, yeah, I the mean, script. It, it we was. had to stop in the middle of the road, get out of the car, pick up our script <laughs> that fell in the street. Oh no, That's the actually... one copy of the script. <laughs> the one copy, exactly. So me and Sebastian had to sleep in the car, and it was freezing cold yeah. all night. And then you guys hardly got any sleep. I don't think it was. I so didn't cold. sleep. He yeah. slept. It was so I cold. Didn't sleep. Yeah. And then I remember around. I don't know what time it was, but probably you would know better. But probably four or five a.m. Yeah. I remember hearing you guys like waddle into the tent at four. Sorrow. I like. Yeah, like 4 a.m. I was so cold and I hadn't been sleeping. I was like, I have to try again. I'm gonna get like hypothermia. So then I just I decided to start it and it, start, it worked. And I liked our other campsite yeah. way more. And then I think which I slept one? in that day, which yeah. is really nice. The, yeah, you the, did. The yeah. RV one. Yeah, the RV one. Yeah, we stayed in two campsites. Except the creepy, the creepy neighbor. Do you remember him? Do you remember the creepy neighbor Wait. who would just sit out? In, in his little, like porch right. chair and yeah. not do anything but just stare at us while we were having it like our like dinner and shit. Camping, just sit. It was so weird, was and he was just by himself. People sometimes just do that though. Um, just sit. And, and remember the Alaskan lady who like kept telling us that she was like an Alaskan really Airlines nice, commercial. Yeah, she was her. cool. So to go into how awfully we treated the script, um, I th- basically so like you said, we left the script on top of the car. We lost pages, I think. Right. No. I have no? a few storyboard pages. It's okay. not the script. We pretty much we had the di- we had digital copies, but yeah. we did really only have one hard yeah. copy the whole time, which is stressful. And it was like and my body and which is good. Oh yeah, producer, there you go. Um, oh yeah, I scanned the whole storyboard. That was right. my that shining was, moment. Was, oh, I think that was the nice. official producer moment. <laughs> so something that I really found interesting about shooting Beach Club was how much improvisation happened, um, and that wasn't a plan that I was aware of going in. I don't know if that was an idea that you had, something you wanted to play with. Yeah, it was. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. well, I I really loved doing that, and I think it made for some of the best moments of the movie. I knew it was going to be like that from the first shoot onwards. It's yeah. because when I was storyboarding it and writing it, like, the writing worked for the storyboard, but we had all these shots that we would have to chop up into, you know, seven shots or eight shots and then we'd see where we were like the thing we're supposed to be shooting and like you look from the storyboard and it's like okay they're walking into field and then we look up and it's like no they're not they're doing this insane thing that's not totally different totally different yeah Yeah. did that uh was that helpful in editing or like horrific i Uh, picture horrific you'd think it would have been worse structurally we were pretty on point with the story like we knew like if we went to a shot we knew that it needed to begin a certain way and end a certain way but in between that, I think a lot of like the actors were able to just kind of do their own thing, and as long as they hit certain important lines, then yeah, know, like I it think worked. that um, you could totally see like background wise, like where people were coming from. Like Scotty, for example, had like an obvious um, 
like inclination to do more like theatrical yeah. stuff because mm-hmm. he's a background in theater. yeah and then uh jaw uh justin, justin i always forget his name yeah justin okay. um had a more he was more he was theatrical as well but more kind of like reserved and it was more kind of like he had more experience with it yeah and then uh max just kind of played himself almost mm-hmm. But it was so great. But you it know, was so he was, no he really was surprisingly this. such a talented actor. Like, yeah. it, I mean, like, not to be, like, mean, but it was, de- like, if you know him personally, it's, it was weird seeing him really switch. It was weird to go, he, he was so, so unprofessional. Cool. He was so He would good. be very, so like, good. annoying, and you're like, oh my god, this is never gonna work out. And then it'd be action, and he was no, just he was spot so, on. Yeah, he was so good. Yeah. Um, and, like, to be as young as he is, and be such, like, a talented actor... It's really yeah it's it's, it's cool good. it's cool to see it just seems like it comes naturally to him yeah so with like training and, and practice i want to see him amazing. in like a different part almost because yeah. i feel like he kind of like brought him brought like his own personality to the part a lot which like it needed i'm curious so i went into the beach club shoot with some reservations um i was a little worried about organization and whether or not this was gonna like form into anything um Especially, like, more so before we shot stuff in Seattle, which is what happened before we went to Port Townsend. Like, I think before we shot a single thing, I was just kind of on I have, edge. I have something cool to say. Yeah. You had told me about your, your idea, right? Remember? Mm-hmm. And you had, like, sent me the script, and like, it was not finished. And remember, like, we kind of, like, finished it at then. Like, we wrote, like, the womb scene and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And we kind of, like, rounded it out and had, like, kind of, like, a good ending. Um, but I totally remember that, and that was, like, probably more than a year ago. And I really, I thought it was really cool seeing how, like, it went from, like, an unfinished script to being more of a script and, like, it going, I mean, like, a finished script and then it going to kind of editing and then you making the, um, like, the thing, like, the, what's it called? The, fuck. The play-by-play. The The storyboard. Storyboard, yeah. (laughs) You making the The storyboard. Play-by-play. The storyboard. And then, I don't know, like, it's cool. Yeah, it was cool to see that whole thing play out because I remember where it was just, like, a a total idea and we had no kind of plans of where it was going to go or what it was going to be. But I feel like from what you, like, showed me in the very beginning, I feel like it's a really accurate representation of, like, what you had in mind. It did come across pretty clearly. I think that's partially your writing. Yeah, the writing, writing was amazing. So, the like, writing was so good. That, like, I think we knew ex- we all knew exactly what we were trying to make. If you guys could choose a book or television show or film, maybe even combinations of multiple, that, that accurately represented the style or the thing of Beach Club, what would you say? And nothing oh, is an option. Um, I uh, Some parts of Where the Wild Things Are. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Yes. Also, um, fear and loathing. But. Throw out a weird answer. Yeah, Rico answer, because I have to. Um, the works of C. J. Young, who was uh, worked with Freud, yeah. Sigmund Freud, and um, just because I feel like a lot of my, I mean, when you see it, you're not gonna think this, but my, a lot of my inspiration be- behind art and film and the. The message that I try to get across with everything that I make is the same, and it's about the mind, and it's about acknowledging your subconscious and acknowledging that the mind is more, a, it's a bigger part of your life than people like to acknowledge, and um, I just, I want people to walk away from Beach Club thinking more about themselves, not in a, not in a superficial sense, but in an uh, interior sense. This is not as deep as that, but all the time when I was on set, I don't even know, maybe this would like make you mad to say, but it reminded me a lot of Alice in Wonderland, just because... That makes me mad. <laughs> the characters, <laughs> Leo's I'm mad. characters, especially Gus, I feel like is all like Alice, and just all the characters together because of her like internal, like, this is how it should be, but then like everything's not how it should be, and it's like crazy, and... Also, just, like, uh, on a superficial level, like, the wackiness and, like, all the characters, and it's just, like, really silly and fun. For the three characters, I pictured, I always pictured Justin's character as, like, the character who's, like, totally everything's under control. He knows what he's doing. Been there, done that. Exactly. And then Scotty's character, Gus, who you brought up similar to Alice, is, like, freaking out, but he's totally okay with it. 
and then Max's character is like freaking out and he's so not okay with it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, that, that, yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. So it's like different psyches. Definitely. And I think they play off of each other really well. It was one of the first few days of shooting. Um, we were all, we all gathered up our equipment and we were walking to a, a staircase that was probably a 10 minute walk, maybe 15 minute walk away from the campsite. The staircase led down to the beach and we were walking and then I forgot my, I realized I forgot my camera that I was using to take behind the scenes photos and videos and things like that. So I decided, okay, I'm going to run back and I'll just meet the rest of the crew at this staircase. I don't know if you, guys, if you remember this. Is that when we were just like never there yeah. again? When so, we vanished. Well, and then I go and get my camera and I have some other stuff too, just equipment. Um, and then I grab my camera and then I go to the staircase and it's like a decent walk. And then I get to the staircase and they're like not there. I'm like, okay, that's kind of weird. And then I go down to the beach and they're not at the beach at the bottom of the staircase. And then I call, I think, Leo and you say that turns out location had changed and it's actually like a 10 minute walk another way to a location that I'd never been to and then I was like okay whatever and then it might have been you might have been somebody else that was like oh by the way can you run back to camp and get this thing we forgot and maybe it was just like all this stress it was like one of the first days of shooting and we'd woken up early and I was super stressed but I was just so upset over the prospect of like having to go back and forth to all these different places and so then I like angrily to myself like you know walked back to camp and I was just in my head thinking like why the hell am I here like this is I'm just a hand like I was I'm a cog so it's just <laughs> I was so steaming and then I got to, to camp and I grabbed the stuff and I like literally couldn't carry it all and I think Leo you showed up and you're like hey okay and you like take some stuff and then I, right. I felt I a little better and then we got to the location it was fine but like I think after that and after we got rolling on the shooting, um, I felt a lot more comfortable with what we were doing um, and the pace that we were doing it at and the schedules and all of that. So Yeah, yeah. I think I think everyone had a moment where they were like, they, were, they just felt like really frustrated. Like, I'm just being, I mean, maybe not you or Sebastian, but like, I'm just being used for this. But then you realize, like, I don't know, I definitely had these it moments. A, a, but, like, then you just kind of realize that we are all having to, like, we're all suffering, yeah. and we're all using each other just to, like, make this happen. It's yeah, basically the, the movie's that. just making, like, using all of us to be made in a weird way. Yeah, and I feel and like you kind of have machine. to get over your own, you're like, a cog in the machine. You have to accept that. Yeah. <laughs> we're all just really another like brick that. in the wall, guys. <laughs> I think there should have been more puppets, though. Mm-hmm. Oh god, I could have I could have made some hard. amazing yeah, puppets. Puppets, puppets and paper mache. Oh, Favorite yeah. parts of the Port Townsend shoot. I think was telling that guy when I when I met up with that guy and uh and he he was like, What are you guys shooting? And I was like, Oh, we're we're um we're a dog photography company called deaddogs.com. <laughs> Dead and, dog go, right? and he was that. so horrified to hear me say those words. <laughs> And then I was like, well, we take pictures of dogs after they die. Not like we don't kill them or anything. And he was like, he was like whoosh, whoosh, you know, <laughs> oh, thank God. I thought you were a bunch of dog killers. But then um, he was like, he was telling me, he's like, yeah, I work at the church. And uh, he was a church guy. Yeah, 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 he was. And he was, he was telling us about, he was like telling me about how he's photographed dogs before and he's like but they've been alive I mean I've always wanted to experiment and I was like that's a joke <laughs> <laughs> because I'm kidding and he's not he's like but I'm totally serious right now. okay Emma and then Katie and then me actually can Katie go first yeah. if you think about it I don't know favorite like a favorite moment it like be, his um it could be something like about drive, the I think driving oh, like, I loved driving there and like have, listening to the music and it was such like um I don't know I have these little like film moments in my head and it was such a little, like, film moment, and I just loved it. You know what was the moment? When we were driving back, and everyone was asleep, except for me, and Sebastian was sleeping on me, like, on my shoulder, and I was so tired. But that wasn't my favorite part, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what my favorite part was. I have one Eating thing pizza when your mom came. Oh, my God, that oh, pizza was so the best. Nice. Yeah, my mom stopped by and Jesus, um, bought really us all nice. pizza, and, like, she had rented out this cabin like place when we, around where we were camping so we just after we shot we just went and had pizza and uh, it, was so it just meant so we didn't have to do great. dishes we that's why it was so, so nice, nice. We which rock are we gonna eat tonight like, you guys kirkland brand, kirkland brand um checks not checks mix 
the peanut shit. We've been eating bags of that for like days. Yeah. Oh, the granola trail bars? mix. Trail mix. Right. Oh, oh yeah. Tra- that one got mad at me about. One of Why? my favorite. Oh, because I ate all that. One of my favorite moments was when we were shoot- shooting that, talking on the phone with Anna scene, obviously, and we were all like holding uh, our oh, hands wait, wait, over our was, mouths. That was like, one time when I saw Sebastian cr- laugh laughing. so hard that he was yeah. crying. I, yeah, he <laughs> I know. Was that was so. Funny. so funny. I had to. I had to like. Oh my god, that was so hard not to laugh. It was so funny. That field was so pretty too. Remember Thanks. when we had that like walk together? Like we were yeah, all like, waiting. That for was. Him? I was gonna say that, but then I was like, I should just keep it. Yeah. No, I that, that, that was, was really, really fun, nice. Yeah. Like we were waiting for you guys, yeah. and it was just me and Emma. That was the first time. That, and like, then we had other talked. guys were sleeping. You know what I mean? The first time that we had like had a time, like a moment of yeah. time to just like talk. Yeah. And like that was even was like so before awesome. like we started becoming like really good. I mean like we were really good friends, we were, but like but we didn't not know. on that yeah. deep of a level. Yeah, definitely. Like I really opened up to you. Yeah. One of my favorite parts of the shoot it was more so just this is something that really doesn't have any much of anything to do with like actually cameras rolling and we're shooting something but um one of the nights we were in the second campsite which is this huge basically field of rvs and then katie's car and jesse's car (laughs) and two tents or three tents and we walked out to this like lamp post and oh popped up a a speaker and just like you say plopped or propped plopped okay um the only way to do that um and then we just started like playing music and we all just kind of danced in the the lamp light it was one cool. night that that was was it was really, all good music too it's always good music a nice yeah. special like quiet moment in the midst of insanity so, yeah. yeah that was nice 